yung the Lead Pagkatipunan of the Philippine Statistics Authority, and I will be your moderator for this activity. Let us welcome the officials of the Philippine Statistics Authority and the National Economic and Development Authority, who will serve as a resource person for this conference. We have Under Secretary Claire Dennis S. Baca, PSC National Statistician and Civil Registrar General. We also have Social Economic Planning Secretary Ernesto M. Perna. Joining them are Assistant Secretary Carlos Bernardo Ugabat Santos of NEDA and Assistant National Statistician Vivian R. Ilarina of PSA. To start our press conference, let us have Yusek Claire Dennis S. Mapa for the presentation of the performance of the Philippine economy for the third quarter of 2019. Good morning, everyone. The Philippine Statistics Authority is pleased to report the performance of the Philippine economy for the third quarter of 2019. The gross domestic product, or GDP, grew by 6.2% in the third quarter of 2019 from the 6.0% growth in the same period of the previous year. Net primary income, or NPI, from the rest of the world posted a growth of 2.9%. On the other hand, gross national income, or GNI, grew by 5.6%. Among the major economic industries, services recorded the fastest growth at 6.9%, while industry expanded by 5.6%, and agriculture grew by 3.1%. With the country's projected population reaching 108.3 million in the third quarter of 2019, per capita GDP posted a growth of 4.5%. This was 4.4% in the same quarter of the previous year. Meanwhile, per capita GNI and per capita household final consumption expenditure grew by 4.0% and 4.3% respectively. Among the three major economic industries, services had the highest contribution to the GDP growth in the third quarter of 2019 with 4.1 percentage points. This was followed by industry with 1.9 percentage points and agriculture with 0.2 percentage point. Among the production sub-industries, construction posted the highest growth in the third quarter of 2019 with 16.3%. This was followed by the following industries. Financial intermediation, 10.0%. Transportation, storage, and communication, 9.1% and trade and repair of motor vehicles, motorcycles, personal and household goods at 8.1%. Major contributors to the GDP growth were the following, trade and repair of motor vehicles, motorcycles, personal and household goods at 1.5 percentage points. Construction, at 1.1 percentage points and financial intermediation at 0.7 percentage point. On the demand side, intellectual property products posted the highest growth of 30.5%, followed by the three components, construction 17.3%, government final consumption expenditure at 9.6% and export of services at 8.1%. Major contributors to the GDP growth from the expenditure side were number one, household final consumption expenditure at 3.9 percentage points, construction at 1.8 percentage points, government final consumption expenditure at 1.1 percentage points. The Philippine Statistics Authority appreciates your presence in this third quarter 2019 National Accounts Press Conference 
and we look forward to meeting you again on January 23, 2020, when we report the performance of the building economy for the fourth quarter of 2019. Thank you and good morning. Thank you very much, Lucy Papa. As flash on our screens, you may download the materials for this press conference at www.psa.rod.ph slash dash press dash release. Using your smartphones, you may also access this by scanning the QR code on the infographics provided. Thank you. Good morning, our partners uh, from the Philippine Statistics Authority, led by Dr. Mapa, colleagues in government, friends from the media, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant good morning to all of you. We are, of course, glad to share that after two quarters of uh, deceleration, the growth of the Philippine economy surged to 6.2% in the third quarter of 2019. This brings the year-to-date economic growth to 5.8%, just slightly below the lower end of the 6 to 7% full-year growth target of the government set by the DBCC. This means that the Philippine economy will have to expand by at least 6.7% in the last quarter of the year to meet the low end of the full year target of 6 to 7% for 2019, a challenge that we are confidently taking on. Compared with other major emerging economies, the region in the region that have already released uh, their third quarter GDP growth numbers, the Philippines likely ranks second behind Vietnam 7.3%, but higher than China 6%. Uh, India's uh, third quarter growth of below 6% and Indonesia's 5% growth for the period. The stronger growth in public spending the third quarter contributed significantly to our third quarter performance. Some may be quick to say that the private sector is a timid participant in our economic growth. Nothing can be far farther from the truth. We know that the private sector is the main driver of the economy with the government providing an enabling policy environment and supportive infrastructure. That is why we need to address infrastructure, infrastructure, both logistics and uh, regulatory bottlenecks. Government is committed to speeding up the implementation of its programs and projects that were affected by the budget impasse and the election ban earlier this year. Yesterday, the Investment Coordination Committee Cabinet level and the Committee on Infrastructure approved the list, the updated list of infrastructure flagship projects of the Duterte administration, subject to further refinements. We deem that these projects are more feasible, more responsive to medium and long-term demands and challenges towards uplifting the quality of life of the Filipino people, especially those being left behind. Thus, we call on our colleagues in government, the private sector, partner international organizations, and the citizen, citizenry at large to work together to overcome these hurdles and ensure that these projects get completed on time or at least started substantially. Relatedly, the timely passage of the national budget plays a crucial role, as you already know. We welcome the approved validity, validity extension of the 2019 fiscal program, as well as the passage of the 2020 fiscal program, proposed national budget at the House of Representatives. We hope that the, uh, this, uh, the passage of both measures will also be timely 
in the Senate. For the remaining months of the year, the benign inflation outlook and more upbeat consumer confidence are expected to stimulate private consumption, especially with the, new, with the holiday season that has already begun. As we, as we welcome the easing of inflation, we continuously monitor prevailing prices to ensure that they are reflective of current market situation. Ample supply of basic commodities should also be ensured to further boost domestic consumption. <coughs> Meanwhile, the expansionary monetary policy stance of the government is expected to encourage private investments. The Central Bank has already cut its key policy rates by a cumulative 75 basis points this year. It has also lowered the bank's reserve requirement by a total of 400 basis points, including the recent 100 basis points reduction for fake banks effective December 2019. In the near term, we expect the agriculture sector to gain momentum on the back of relatively favorable weather conditions. The El Nino neutral situation is likely to continue and only fewer typhoons are expected to occur until April 2020. This is an opportune time to ramp up agricultural production, particularly of high value crops, not to mention infrastructure construction, of course. We note that the upbeat performance of the agriculture sector, growing by 3.1% from 0.8% earlier, uh, this year was driven by increased production of corn, coconut, and pineapple. Moreover, we urge the Department of Agriculture and other concerned agencies to swiftly implement the programs and projects under the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund. Perhaps among the priority projects should be the provision of mechanical dryers, particularly in areas where we lack solar drying facilities. As the harvest season is ongoing, the government should continue to directly buy palai from local producers affected by the unprecedented decline in farm, cut, farm gate prices to help curb their loss, losses. To counter the risk of the spread of the African swine flu African swine fever, the government must continue to enforce its bio biosecurity measures. More stringent quarantine checkpoints, provision of disinfection facilities, and intensified, intensified anti smuggling and meat inspection efforts are also needed. On the external front, the global growth projections of the International Monetary Fund further has been cut to 3% for 2019 and 3.4% for 2020. This is due to broad-based slowdown in industrial output, weaker external demand, and dampened investment and business sentiment exacerbated by increasing trade and geopolitical tensions. To withstand external shocks and promote growth over the medium term, our country must diversify products and markets through establishment or improvement of new or existing trade relations with strategic partners. We are also continuously pushing for the swift passage of the Trabajo Bill and amendments to the Farm Service Act, the Public Service Act, and the Trade Liberalization Act in order to reduce policy uncertainties. This can help encourage private investments and increase the efficiency of conducting transactions with agencies of the government. Another bill that should be prioritized is the National Land Use Act, as this will help 
better utilize, manage, and develop our country's land resources. UNEDA is currently updating the Philippine Development Plan during this medium term juncture with fine tuned uh, strategies needed to achieve the country's priorities and targets. We will launch the Philippine midterm update this December. Just to give you a preview, the following are the emerging key policy reforms that we need to pursue over the next three years. A, remaining tax reform packages. B, the budget reform bill. C, strengthening the culture of planning in government. D, amendments to the BOT law. E, Department of Water and Water Regulatory Commission. F, disaster resiliency bill. And G, the national quality infrastructure. As we can see, the Philippine economy has been steadily growing for the past three years. We expect to sustain this momentum in the following years and cement the Philippine standing as one of the fastest growing economies in Asia, if not in the world. We in the government remain committed to pass reforms and implement programs and projects not solely for economic growth, but most especially for realizing the vision of providing every Filipino a matatag, maginhawa, at panatag na buhay. So thank you and mabuhay tayo lahat. Thank you very much, Secretary Perio, for giving the NATO statement on the third quarter 2019 performance of the Philippine economy. At this point, we now proceed to the open forum. We will just remind you to please wait to be acknowledged before asking your question. Once you're acknowledged, please say your name and organization. We will also appreciate if you could limit your questions related to the performance of the Philippine economy. The floor is now open for your questions. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. Ben, and inquire. Uh, Secretary Perenia, you mentioned earlier that uh, 6.7, we have to hit the, the end of the target, we need to grow 6.7% in D4. You mentioned it's a challenge, but is it achievable? Is it doable? Well, very achievable. Oh, sir. Well, uh, we have uh, seen the economy uh, surging and the momentum will continue. So as to which it surged by what uh, seven percentage points, so surging, um, well, surging for another five percentage points should be easy. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, well, actually, uh, looking at the historical data, uh, we we did uh, six point seven uh, quarter four sometime in twenty sixteen. In twenty seventeen, uh, quarter four uh, we had six point six. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, but in the fourth quarter of last year, we also had a relatively high growth, 6.3%. So given the high peaks, I think we can... Uh, yeah, uh, my, my, my feeling is that based on the historical data, the, the 6.7 is a little bit Thank you, Sir Pernia, and you, Sir Any more questions? Again, do you have all further questions from the media? Yes, again, Sir Ben. Sorry, but uh, regarding uh, the African swine fever, uh, during the inflation report last Tuesday, uh, it was noted that uh, in Metro Manila, the ASF was uh, pulling up the uh, food prices. Uh, do you think this would be a bigger risk in the coming months in the fall quarter, not only to inflation, but also to growth? Thank you. Well, you know, consumers uh, have. Uh, learn to substitute. They also have some economics uh, instinct, you know. So when the price of meat of uh, pork uh, goes up, then they shift to chicken or fish. Uh, food prices have to come down. Yeah, the prices of chicken and uh, meat went up because of uh, substitution. Thank you. Yes, uh, from the right side. Or 
I'm just wondering this is one more sort of area for that. Uh, with regard to uh, government spending, we saw that 40%, almost 40% jump in September. Uh, what's the outlook for the rest of the quarter? Do you think that is going to be sustainable for the rest of the year, or are we going to see a, a, a bit of a easing there? Uh, usually, home spend spending, like the runner, uh, tends to really uh, you know, exert, uh, like the runner, exerts its utmost effort to reach the uh, end line. Okay, so we expect it to be at that, uh, in that vicinity, in that height. Because there's a lot of pressure for, uh, you know, making up. Thank you for the next question. Yes. Hi, Coronel Frida Sograbler. Uh, to anyone in the panel, uh, could you elaborate more on uh, how uh, the low, uh, the declining imports and exports uh, uh, reflect on the uh, latest uh, GDP figure? Well, uh, it did not matter very much uh, until next week. Uh, the, the, yeah, there, there has, uh, the, our export performance has been rather uh, unremarkable, but uh, and, uh, you know, one would hope that it would have some impact on no, negative impact on economic growth in general, but it hasn't really. Uh, the more important uh, factors have uh, overcome the uh, slowness of our export. Thank you. Uh, do we have more questions from the media? Yes, Mr. Wyden. Um, regarding the imports, uh, it was down 10.5 percent in the latest data. Can you talk about that? What that means moving forward, uh, particularly with the uh, decline in uh, imports of capital goods? Is that worrisome for you, or? Uh, uh, no, it's not. It's not really. Uh, not at this time. It will pick up again next year. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the mic is provided up to the so thank you. Why is it going to be from the issue? Do you see any effect of these things of earthquakes in Mindanao on our import? Uh, uh, well, uh, the, yeah, but, well, it will have some impact on, uh, uh, on the economic growth of the region. As uh, regions, uh, essentially region 12, and partly also region 11. But uh, the, contribution, the contribution of region 12 to GDP is uh, rather minor. Like how much more? We'll have to check it out. We will, we will check the number. Mm -hmm. For the next question, are you from the right side? Like this? Yeah. 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 Well, I think, I think it creates uh, great tensions, it creates war between the US and China. It's really the biggest risk, not just for the Philippines, but for the whole global economy. The biggest risk is what you're asking. Yeah. And domestic also? Uh, domestic, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, typhoons are not likely to be a major factor. Um, I nothing uh, nothing of immediate uh, significance I would say. But I can think of maybe I can uh, <coughs> reflect some more. Yes, uh, for the previous question region 11 contribution to GDP is 4.4%, and region 12 is 2.7%. Yeah. 
But again, we still don't have papers in terms of uh, in terms of the impact on the theory, also papers on the humanitarian response to the earthquake. Thank you for the additional information. I think I'm going to sign post. Next, um, this guy. Hi, sir. Um, so regarding the earthquake in connection to that, um, how's that going to affect uh, poverty numbers? Um, how much do these uh, regions contribute to the, the increase in poverty? Thank you. Okay, um, the, the poverty report that we have, uh, we will be presenting uh, next uh, October uh, 2018. So uh, we will have to uh, look at the, the figure after we will have a survey uh, next year. Uh, so in the past, when, when, whenever there's a disaster, uh, normally we will come back and we will look at the figure based on the data that we will collect uh, sometime in 2020. Yeah, yeah, well, in previous years, uh, in the past two or three years, uh, we had uh, you know, structured typhoons, but uh, they, well, our uh, growth rates during those years, 19, uh, 2017 and 2018, were quite decent, better than what we may have uh, uh, this year. The uh, household spending? Yeah, the infrastructure spending, uh, reconstruction, rehabilitation will uh, impact, uh, but that would be felt in the medium term, I would say. Okay, next guy, let's hear from Sir Ben. Uh, sir, regarding the new uh, list of new, new projects, since more than a fourth will know be PPPs, uh, would there be any sort of new guidelines or like a very uh, rigid policy structure, or, uh, policy uh, guidelines you will be releasing. So, uh, to also avoid what the DOF has been fearing uh, about PPPs, like in 2016, for Chinese funded projects, the ICC had uh, three special guidelines. Would you have the same for PPPs moving forward? Would there be a role in your infrastructure program? Thank you. Yeah, uh, for PPPs, we're always, uh, you know, we want to make sure that. Uh, PPP projects are going to uh, benefit the people. That is why we don't want the government guarantees, uh, subsidies, uh, uh, other, you know, uh, like uh, anything having to do with uh, MAGA. We need, we only, we restrict it to executive branch only. Uh, judiciary and uh, local governments are uh, covered by MAGA. And uh, so you can, uh, you can see that they're very restrictive. It took us uh, almost a year just to pass the O&M for the Pohor Pangal International Airport. And that's because it goes through so many iterations. And uh, well, we want to make sure, of course, also that we won't get uh, sued. Uh, when we are out of office already. That's always a, there's always a danger when we are not so careful about uh, dealing with uh, projects. But sure, will this be set in stone that you have written rules detailing all these, uh, 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 what you don't want to be included in contracts, PPP contracts? That's correct. We have a statement actually, uh, which we will distribute to the people, sometimes there's a lot of guidelines. Project list in general. Guidelines on what are the criteria. Guidelines on criteria on what uh, are included in the project. Thank you, Secretary. Yes, again, Ms. Kelly. Sir, is that also the, the reason for the revision in the DOP law and the, the other um, uh, policy recommendations being mentioned in your at toward the end of your speech? Right? So the DOP law have been uh, pending for quite some time. So not really directly related to the more recent concerns we have about PPPs. Thanks. Sir Wagon. Uh, just a question on gross capital formation, negative 2.1%. Can you discuss this further and why you think uh, that was the result of the third quarter?
one that uh, I'm going to pull down is uh, basically global demand uh, having a negative 9.1%. And uh, this is due to uh, pro vehicles minus 6.8%. Uh, and then air transport negative 34 And mining construction machineries minus 1.2%. So basically, the, the source uh, of the negative uh, growth is the uh, durable. And, uh, you know, purchase of durable equipment uh, is not uh, steady the whole year round. You know, it's um, certain certain periods you buy durable equipment. Thank you. Next, uh, we have another question from our gentleman at the back. Hi, please. Thank you, Bobby. Uh, thank you from CICD. So, um, in connection with the, uh, with the with the question of a gentleman there. Um, the cross capital formation is 2.1, and I think it's for some reason that it should reflect the uh, confidence of businesses. Um, do you think this uh, slowdown will also continue for quarter four? Well, uh, not, uh, not really. Uh, as I said, uh, the purchase of uh, airplanes, cars, uh, you know, the fitting of cars. You know, they are not going to be steady throughout the year. They are, you know, they're planned that on certain specific periods. So, I not, you cannot generalize on that. Also, uh, from the data, uh, we've seen that fixed investments have improved from quarter two, but the inventories pulled it down. So they were drawing on their existing inventories, but fixed investments improved. Thank you. Any more questions? Yes, ma'am. For Secretary uh, Sandra Shasta from CNN Philippines. For Secretary Fernandez, please ask what specific infrastructure projects contributed to increased spending in the third quarter? Um, well, essentially, uh, DPWA's projects, uh, highways, uh, and uh, irrigation projects, uh, and then uh, DOTR as well. So the, big spend, the bigger spending is really the DPWA. And then uh, we had planned earlier to really cut, do catch up spending. So, and uh, it seems to have worked, but, uh, the, what we had planned. We have not yet done as early as the mid, mid year when we saw that uh, uh, the second quarter growth was uh, quite uh, disappointing. Thank you, Zephyria. Any more questions? Done. All right, so if there are no more questions, this concludes the open forum. Before we end this conference, we would like to seek your support to campaign for the active participation of everyone in the 2020 Census of Population and Housing, which will start on May 4, 2020. <laughs> so this has been our press conference for the third quarter 2019 performance of the Philippine economy. Again, thank you to our resource persons. Secretary Ernesto Perga, Jose Claire Dennis Mapa, Ase Carlos Bernardo Abad Santos, and Assistant National Statistician Vivian Udalina. To all the attendees of this press conference, most especially our friends from the media, thank you very much and see you again on January 23, 2020. Good morning.